All right, so now let's take a look at the renal pyramid itself. So we've just zoomed in now just a little bit closer. Uh, you've got this renal pyramid right here, which is part of the medulla. And then up here, you've got a nice strip of cortex. So if we uh, pick up where we left off in terms of the blood flow, we got the arcuate artery and vein running right across this top here. Then you've got these cortical radiate arteries that are going out, radiating into the cortex. And so what you're going to see is branches off of the cortical radiate artery. There's a small arterial that heads into the glomerulus here. And remember, the glomerulus is simply a capillary bed. It's a modified capillary bed that uh, has a specialized amount of permeability to it. But basically, it's like a capillary bed you'd find anywhere else in terms of the flow. So you're going to go from arterial to capillary bed. And so this arterial that leads to the glomerulus is an arterial going into something. So we call that the afferent arterial. And then it's not easy to see in this model, but there's also an arterial actually leaving the capillary bed. Um, and that's going to be the efferent arterial. And so those are really the only thing. Here's the efferent arterial here coming out. And so that efferent arterial is going to lead to what are called peritubular capillaries, which just literally means the capillaries that are around the tubules. You can see these little blood vessels in here all around the tubules. And then those vessels will actually lead to what's called the vasa recta. So on this one, you can actually see this flow. We go from efferent arterial to vasa recta. There's not much contrast here, but that's what number 12 is actually pointing at. Vasa recta, so plural. And then that's going to lead you uh, back into the venous supply, which you can actually see a lot nicer over here, where you go from artery into vein, down the vasa recta, and into the vessels. Okay, so that's it for the blood flow, basically. And again, remember the venous blood flow, you go back to arcuate vein, and it's the same as the pathway as the arterials, except for it lacks the segmental vein. So in terms of the structure here, what you have are two different kinds of nephrons. Uh, you have what's called a cortical nephron and a juxtamedullary nephron. And you're going to focus probably more in lecture uh, on the juxtamedullary nephron because these are our kind of our fancy, about 15% of the total nephrons in the kidney. Uh, so, but each one of the nephrons uh, is going to have basic, easy to name components to it. Uh, there's the, the glomerulus, which is just the capillary bed, but then there's a capsule around the glomerulus, which is called the Bowman's capsule. And then there's a tube leading out of the Bowman's capsule that's called, that is the first tube. It's the tube that's nearest to the glomerulus, so it's called the proximal convoluted tubule, or PCT is often how it's referred to. That proximal convoluted tubule goes down into what's called this whole structure, which is called the loop of Henle, and it has a descending limb and an ascending limb of the loop of Henle. And there's also a thin and thick portion of the loop of Henle. So you can be very specific about the precise location. So this would be like the thin portion of the descending limb of the loop of Henle. And then as you follow, and obviously make sure you follow these each time with either your eyes or your fingers if you're actually next to the model. And you're going to follow it up the loop of Henle. And then you're going to go into some more winding tubes, which another way to describe winding or meandering is to be convoluted. So these are the convoluted tubes that are a long way from the glomerulus. So this is the distal convoluted tubule. And then that leads to this large area called the collecting duct. And all the collecting ducts, each one of these little spouts coming off the end, are actually distal convoluted tubules draining into one common collecting duct. So the collecting duct is very, very large. So when you look at it under a microscope, just appreciate how much larger the diameter of the tube is. Uh, it's going to be much, much bigger, and it's going to get bigger, actually, as it goes further and further down into the medulla of the kidney. So pretty much that's... That's it for the new stuff here. We already went over the capsule and, and the pyramid and some of the general structures. Uh, again, this is the renal papilla here. So if you look under a microscope, what you'll actually see is a bunch of collecting ducts that merge at the renal papilla with some pretty large lumen. Uh, that's pretty much it, so I'll end it there.